ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भगवत श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो वन चैप्टर वन टेक्स सेवन यानी वेद विदाम श्रेष्ठ भगवान बादरायन अन्ये अन्ये च मुनयः सूत परावर विदह विदु यानी वेद विदा श्रेष्ठो भगवान बादरायन अन्ये च मुनय सूत परावर विदो विदु यानी वेद विदा श्रेष्ठो भगवान बादरायन अन्ये च मुनय सूत परावर विदो विदु यानी वेद विदा श्रेष्ठो भगवान बादरायन अन्ये च मुनय सूत परावर विदो विदु यानी वेद विदा श्रेष्ठो भगवान बादरायन अन्ये च मुनय सूत परावर विदो विदु यानी वेद विदा श्रेष्ठो भगवान बादरायन अन्ये च मुनय सूत परावर विदो विदु यानी वेद विदा श्रेष्ठो भगवान बादरायन अन्ये च मुनय सूत परावर विदो विदु यानी ऑल दैट वेद विदा स्कॉलर्स ऑफ द वेदर्स श्रेष्ठ सीनियर मोस्ट भगवान इनकानेशन ऑफ गॉड हेड बादरायन व्यासदेव अन्य अदर्स च एंड मुनय द सेजेस सूत ओ सूत गोस्वामी परावर विद अमंग्स द लर्नड स्कॉलर्स वन हु इज कन्वर्सेंट विथ physical and metaphysical knowledge physical and metaphysical knowledge vidu who vidu who one who knows one who knows translation prepared by his divine grace shri ac bhaktivedanta swami shri prabhupad translation being the eldest learned vedantist o suta goswami you are acquaint you are acquainted with the knowledge of vyasa dev who is the incarnation of godhead and you also know other sages who are fully versed in all kinds of physical and metaphysical knowledge purport 
Srimad Bhagavatam is a natural commentation on the Brahma Sutra or the Badarayani Vedanta Sutras. It is called natural because Vyasadeva is author of both the Vedanta Sutras and Srimad Bhagavatam or the essence of all Vedic literatures. Besides Vyasadeva, there are other sages who are the authors of six different philosophical systems, namely Gautam, Karnad, Kapila, Patanjali, Jaimini, and Ashtavakra. Theism is explained completely in the Vedanta Sutra, whereas in other systems of philosophical speculations, practically no mention is given to the ultimate cause of all causes. One can sit on the Vyasasana only after being conversant in all systems of philosophy so that one can present fully the theistic views of the Bhagavatam in defiance of all other systems. Srila Sutta Goswami was the proper teacher and therefore the sages at Naimi Sharanya elevated him to the Vyasasana. Srila Vyasadeva is designated herein as the personality of Godhead because he is the authorized empowered incarnation. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaman Iti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gaura Vani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschata Deshatadine Jay Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuditi Ananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasini Gaura Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Yani Veda Vidam Shreshto Bhagavan Badarayanaha Anye Chamunayaha Sutta Paravara Vida Vido Viduhu Being the eldest learned Vedantist, O Sutta Goswami, you are acquainted with the knowledge of Vyasadev, who is the incarnation of Godhead, and you are you also know other sages who are fully versed in all kinds of physical and metaphysical knowledge. As we saw in the previous verse, Sutta Goswami is being requested to take the Vyasasana. In the previous verse, the sages of Naimi Sharanya said that respected Sutta, they want him to take the Vyasasana, to take an elevated seat and um, discourse on knowledge. Why? Because they said, number one is that you are free from vice, from sinful activity. If uh, one is addicted to sinful activity, knowledge cannot manifest knowledge will not manifest in him, then what will he speak? <clears throat> also, you are well versed in all scriptures, famous for religious life. And particularly here it says in the shloka, Toya kalu puranani se itihasani chanagha. So puranas, itihasas, toya kalu. So you are well versed in these supplements of the Vedas with illustrative narrations. So that he knows the Puranas and Itihasas. It's saying, because you're free from vice, you know the Shastra, and you have gone through them under proper guidance. Three things are there, which made him qualified. You have gone through them under proper guidance. Yes, he knows them, and not only that, but he got guidance from an elevated personality who is coming in a proper chain to explain him. Because we'll not understand the Veda if we just read the Sanskrit or the Puranas, Itihasas, we need a commentary, like here we have a commentary. So who wrote the commentary? That's a question. Because if the person who wrote it himself did not hear it from authorized source, he is not free from vice, he is sinful, he, or he has other imperfections, then we will not get the meaning. We will not get the meaning of what is the verse, we will get a different meaning. So they are very careful who is going to speak. So they told Sutta Goswami. Sutta Goswami, as we said, he was present during Shukadev Goswami's narration of Srimad Bhagavatam. He was sitting, he heard everything. So they told him now in this verse, it's saying that, O Sutta, being the eldest Vedantist, he's the eldest, there were others Vedantist. In other words, those who knew the conclusion of the Vedas. Veda, Anta, Vedanta. They knew <clears throat> the conclusion, the meaning of the Vedas, out of them he was the eldest. Eldest means more realized, more, not always, usually, more realized, more knowledgeable, deeper insight. So being the eldest and 
Yeah, so being the eldest Vedante, so Sutta, you are acquainted with the knowledge of Vyasadev. They want to hear knowledge of Vyas. So they appointed Sutta Goswami. And Vyas, who is the incarnation of Godhead. Vyasadev was the incarnation. That's why it says here, Bhagavan, Badarayana, Badarayani, Bhagavan. He is the incarnation of God. Not a plenary, full uh, incarnation, empowered incarnation. Therefore, because of all of these points, they appointed Sutta Goswami that you speak to us, speak the knowledge of Vyas. Vyasa's knowledge means the Vedas. They specifically wanted to hear the Vedas. Being eldest and acquainted, yeah, we said that. So the point now is clarified in the purport. <coughs> Prabhupada explains that Sutta Goswami was told uh, to ask, requested to speak on Vyasadeva, knowledge of Vyas. But here now, immediately, Vyasadeva wrote the whole Vedas. But what do they want to know? All the Vedas. Prabhupada writes here, Srimad Bhagavatam is a natural commentation on the Brahma Sutras or the Badarayani Vedanta Sutras. They specifically, it will become clear later, they wanted to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Because they were aware, now we are not aware, everyone, that Vyasadeva uh, sorry, that Srimad Bhagavatam is the conclusion of the Vedas and it was written after all the Vedas. So that was the highest knowledge of the Vedas, the fruit. Nigama Kalpataror Galitam Phalam, the ripened fruit of the tree of Vedic knowledge. <coughs> so it's clarified here. They want to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Why? It's a natural commentation on the Brahma Sutras or Badarayani Vedanta Sutras. So, who wrote the Vedanta Sutras? Vedvyas. Vyas wrote Vedanta Sutras. Here it's referred to as <coughs> Badarayana. Yeah, no, they're not referring, but they're saying they want to hear the knowledge of Yani Veda Vidam Shreshto. Yani, all that knowledge, Veda Vidam, scholars of the Vedas, Shreshta, out of all the scholars, Shreshta, most senior. Bhagavan Badarayana. Badarayana is Vyas. Why is he called Badarayana? Badarayana. It's explained that um, where is his abode? Where does Vyasadeva stay? Where is he? Even now, he's there. Badrinath. Badrinath. So there also Badri. So that place, there are a lot of, uh, it says there are Badra trees. I don't know what is a Badra tree. But in English they call it Jujube. Even that I don't know. But I know the name. That is, that tree is common in that area. And so Badrinath. The lord of that place is Vishnu. Badrinath. And uh, Vyas is Badarayana, the one residing in the place where there are many Badri, uh, Badara trees. Yeah. So he's known as Badarayana. Uh, many names are given in Shastra sometimes. They'll refer to a personality. Then according to his Leela or his qualities, he's given another name. Shukadev Goswami, what is another name of him? In his Pranamantra, uh, it says Vyasa Sununu. Vyasa Sunu Payami Guru Muni Nam. Vyasa Sunu means Vyasa Dev is uh, son, Sunu. So Shukadev Goswami is referred to as Vyasa Sunu. And other places are there. Vyasaki, the name of uh, Shukadev Goswami. So here um, Vyasa Dev is being referred to as Badarayana. So it's saying here Bhagavan Badarayana. Bhagavan. Why is he called Bhagavan? Bhagavan is Vishnu. Because actually Bhagavan means possessor of Bhagava, opulences. So a great personality, a great devotee, sometimes they refer to him as Bhagavan. Sometimes in Bhagavatam they refer to Lord Shiva as Bhagavan. Because being devotees of Vishnu, being connected to him, they also have access to this opulence and knowledge. A pure devotee is dovetailed the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So his intelligence, his knowledge, his 
energy, his mystic powers are not the same as us. He's got much more access to that because being connected to Vishnu. So, he's referred to as Bhagavan, also having Bhaga opulences. <coughs> Brahma, uh, Brahma Sutra was written by Vyasadev. Vyasadev wrote Brahma Sutra and another name for that is given here. Badarayani Vedanta Sutras. He wrote them. And uh, it is as we refer, we mention again and again that Vedanta Sutra is the conclusion of all Vedic knowledge. The Vedas have the Shruti, the four Vedas. Within the Shruti it's divided into four. Samhita, Brahmana, Aranyak and Upanishads for uh, Brahmacharis, Grasas, Sanyasis, and uh, Vanaprasth. So the Upanishads are the highest, and a discussion of Upanishads should be done in the with the in proximity of a guru. Therefore, one another name of they say Upanishad means different meanings. One is sit close. Upa means near. Upanishad sit near. Other one says that um, Upanishad means. Uh, I can't remember the other meanings, but they're all referring to one needing a guru to f elaborate on that knowledge. So the Upanishads, it's the highest part of the Shruti. Now Upanishad is so high, we cannot understand it simply just to open and read, you cannot. We have to have gone through the Vedas. We have to have gone through Gurukul. Some level of, uh, of course you can open, you'll catch maybe some 40, 50, some percent. But a lot of it assumes that you know some knowledge. So that knowledge of Upanishad is the highest. But Upanishadic knowledge is further distilled essence is given in Vedanta Sutra, which is short, but essence. So Vedanta Sutra is written by Vyasadev. He wrote it, but again, that is not something that we can understand easily. <clears throat> it says in one of the parts of the Vedas that Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam is Bhashyam Brahma Sutra Nam. The commentary on the Vedanta Sutra is given in is Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Puran is the highest part of Vedas narrated. It is a commentary of Vedanta. It's the topmost. If we read Bhagavatam, there is no need for any other Shastra. And if there's any contradiction in something, uh, something and Bhagavatam, we take Bhagavatam. <clears throat> there, there are small differences in the story of Mahabharata. If you read some narrations are here, we'll accept this. And uh, some narrations of Lord Ram, there I don't in ninth canto, I don't think that's any different. So now this, uh, it's written in Prabhupada right here that Srimad Bhagavatam is a natural commentation on Brahma Sutra. Why is it called natural? There are other commentations on Vedanta Sutra written, but not in the same view as Vyasadev. Vyasadev has made it clear in Vedanta that there is a supreme entity. We are his servant, especially, and uh, we have to worship him. We are not supreme. There is a supreme. And from him came the whole creation. Janmadi Asya Yataha. It's the opening text of Vedanta Sutra is, we are referring to him, Yata, who Janma Adi Asya. He is uh, created, maintained, and Adi, etc. I mean, created, maintained, and destroy the material universe. So we are referring to that personality. That is opening uh, line of Vedanta Sutra, which is the opening line of our Srimad Bhagavatam. Same, O Janma Adi Asya Yata. So now, this is a natural commentation because what was the meaning intended in Vedanta Sutra? Who will know? The author will know. He'll know, ask him. <clears throat> but commentaries have been written. Example, Shari Rika Bharsha, which do not conclude in us surrendering to a supreme entity and that there is a supreme entity greater than us. They are not giving that conclusion in teachings of, say, Shankara, Shankaracharya. <clears throat> Vyasadeva was clear. And so now Vyasadeva himself wrote the commentary here. This is Srimad Bhagavatam. It is Vedanta Sutra. And Jiva Goswami has written, in one of his writings, he has taken every single sutra of Vedanta. Four chapters divided into four. And he has shown where they are in Srimad Bhagavatam. 
in the text Sanskrit. Not easy task. But he was a great scholar, Pandit. So this is the natural commentary on Bhagavatam. Now why are they calling Sutta Goswami to the knowledge, to speak knowledge? Because he heard Srimad Bhagavatam. There may have been other people there. <coughs> they said, you are the eldest. <coughs> there may have been others, <coughs> others there, elder than him. Or equal to him in age, free from vice, etc. Okay, but here, you are acquainted with the knowledge of Vyas. Vyas has a lot of knowledge, but they are referring to Srimad Bhagavatam. Sutta Goswami was seated there. Uh, so Sudha Goswami, when he was called to speak, his opening line, he first spoke in chapter 2, two or three, chapter 2, he before beginning, he glorified Shukadeva Goswami. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him, Shuka, the master of spiritual master of all the sages, son of Yasadev. Who out of his great compassion for those gross materialists who struggle to cross over the darkest regions of material existence. For their benefit, he spoke this confidential supplement to the cream of Vedic knowledge. Cream, the cream, what is cream? In milk, yeah, in milk if you churn it, the essence of the milk comes, the cream. So this is the essence. He spoke the essence. This is the cream of the Vedas. It's, it's, and well, actually this is translated from Sanskrit. Akhila Shruti Saram Ekam. Yaswan Ubhavam Akhila Shruti Saram Ekam. Shruti, the Shruti, Vedas. Akhila, all the Shrutis, Saram. This is the Sar. So Sudha Goswami glorifies Shukadev Goswami, who he heard this knowledge from before uh, speaking. So we understand this is the Sar, the essence, Srimad Bhagavatam. So Sudha Goswami was there, he heard the natural commentation. And having heard it from Shukadev Goswami and being in, uh, in a pure condition, sinless person, he was well placed to speak this knowledge. So this uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, is not the only explanation of the Vedas and the Vedic view. There are other explanations which are six in total. Out of these six, one, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, out of these six, actually they are not theistic. They are not telling us that we have to worship a Supreme Personality of Godhead. We are servant of God. We have to awaken that love and learn how to do it. They are not saying that. They are saying different things. Karma, Karma Mimamsa says that we simply must do our karma. That's it. And by doing that, we must get the result of the karma. Then enjoy it in Swarga. They are different philosophies. Others philosophies here say that everything is made of atoms in this creation. So then, where is the emotion coming from? Which atom is that? <laughs> emotion? And someone dies. So some atoms be died, uh, not died, some atoms went into the earth. They're being burnt. Why are you crying for atoms? <laughs> Don't cry for atoms. Or some are, uh, some are saying atoms, some are saying that actually everything is illusion, nothing is there. Only. You just have to realize it, <clears throat> that it's illusion. Everyone has a different theory. But one thing, in this world, whatever philosophy anyone has, all of them come under one of these six. No one is smarter <laughs> than uh, Krishna, who has given all the philosophies that all these people may have come up with. He has given them, this is it, and he destroyed them already. <laughs> you have to read the Vedas. So now they're telling Vyas, that you are familiar with other, it says physical and metaphysical knowledge. <coughs> yani Veda Vidam <coughs> Anye Cha Munayaha Sutta Paravara Vida Vida Vidohu. That you know 
Shastra, Bhagavatam, but you also know the other knowledge, the other six darshans. So you are able to properly explain how Bhagavatam is the topmost, how Bhagavan and Bhakti and the Bhakta, these are prince, eternal principles which are, it's the topmost principle. It's known as Bhagavad Dharma. So within Shastra you have Bhagavad Dharma. Bhagavad Dharma is the topmost path. Otherwise we have Karma, Karma Kand, Jnana Kand, different. But Bhagavad Dharma is explaining that there is a Supreme Personality. I am his servant. I forgot. And now I'm suffering here in this world, trying to find happiness, balance, peace. But this is a myth, real meaning of myth. Myth does not mean Leela or Veda. <laughs> That's some different meaning. Myth means Mithya, not true, something false. So the idea that I'll be happy in this world, peaceful, in harmony, without God, this is not possible, impossible. Veda says, not possible. We must suffer. We must suffer because that is not our natural state. Natural state is Jiva must be connected to the Supreme in loving devotion, Bhakti. And he must know the Supreme. There are two kinds of Vedic no uh, spiritual knowledge. One is knowledge about Atma, the Self. Second is knowledge about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, if we do not have these two knowledge, then we are in ignorance. In ignorance, we'll commit sin. Why do people commit path sin? Due to avidya, not having knowledge. Due to having, not having the knowledge. And so Vyas, Vyas wrote Srimad, uh, spoke Srimad Bhagatam. Srimad Bhagatam is the natural commentary to Vedanta Sutra the topmost of what knowledge that he gave in Vedanta Sutra, this is the commentary to explain what it is. And not only he knew this, Sutta Goswami, but he knew the other six philosophies which are not theistic. They are atheistic. Because the atheistic, they cannot lead to liberation or any kind of real happiness and peace. So the preacher should know how Bhagavatam is superior to this. He should be able to explain it. Because when someone is preaching, for us we are in the Gaudiya line, Gaudiya under Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Mahaprabhu, he, who was the topmost preacher of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Lord Nityananda. He empowered him to preach. Nityananda preached more than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but empowered by him. Nityananda is incarnation of Balaram. Chaitanya is incarnation of Krishna. So in Kali Yuga, they both came to preach the Sankirtan movement. So this is the topmost knowledge. And the preacher, Nityananda, what did he do? It's explained in, in Chaitanya Charitamrita that Prem Pracharan Ara Pashandalan, two things. He did not only preach, but he also refuted he refuted the wrong philosophies which was not theistic he gave why this is wrong why that is wrong so when we are speaking veda veda means actual veda knowledge because there are many misconceptions what is veda that we must speak the truth but we must also spend time and speak on what is not true and why it's not true both have to be there Prabhupada did that a lot Modern so-called, so many Boga Swamis, Gurus, Baba, they don't do that. They just speak something, Leela, Leela, Leela of Krishna. People become attracted sentimentally. So nice, so nice. But they don't understand who is Krishna properly. Krishna is Bhagavan. Do they accept that? Krishna has a Vigraha, Satchidananda, body of bliss, happiness, knowledge, not material. That Bhagavan Krishna is Param Satyam, Supreme Truth. We are his servant. Do people understand that properly? That is the danger. One, if we sp simply speak on Leela and don't explain who is Bhagawan, they'll hear the Leela for their enjoyment, it'll be nice, but they'll not understand how Bhagawan is supreme, I have to surrender. They're not emphasizing that point. But Bhagavatam emphasizes. Ten canto, the Leelas are there, but one to nine, surrender. Krishna is supreme. His incarnations, Vishnu, all avatars, they are great and we are a servant. And by only His mercy, we can know Him. 
प्रसाद लेशानुगृत एव ही जानती तत्व भगवान महिम्नो लॉर्ड ब्रह्म सेज दैट बाय ओनी योर मर्सी कृष्ण वन कैन नो यू दिस हैज टू बी लर्न अदरवाइज वील गेट अ रॉन्ग आइडिया सो सुत को स्वामी दि वॉज कॉल बिकॉज ही न्यू दीज अदर दर्शन एंड ही कूड प्रॉपरली एक्सप्लेन वाई दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट एंड वॉट इज करेक्ट इज भागवत धर्म एक्सप्लेन श्रीमद भागवतम द भागवत पुराण एक्सप्लेनिंग भागवत धर्म इज टॉप मोस्ट इट इज एक्सप्लेनिंग दैट वी आर जीव अ सोल सोल इज अ अंश पार्ट ऑफ कृष्ण एंड इटर्नल सर्वेंट ऑफ कृष्ण एंड द जीवा कैन नॉट बी हैप्पी अंटिल ही कम्स टू हिज ओरिजिनल पोजिशन his original position of servitude and loving devotional service to krishna this is conclusion of all shastra this is the conclusion nothing is higher the goal of veda veda is just sarvera ham eva veda goal of veda is to know god to know krishna so in shila propad's books here in iskon many people are taking vyasasan but we are not teaching these six how is that Who can say? Why is that? It says here we should not sit in Vyasasana unless we know all the six. Actually, yeah. The Bhagavatam, uh, this uh, Bhagavatam is accepted as the supreme. Yeah, but we should know the other six and be able to refute it that this is supreme. We philosophically, actually speaking, if you read Shri Prabhupada's books, start with the small book, gradually read all the books. Prabhupada discusses and defeats everything. but we don't give the name he doesn't give the name this is gautam kanad kapila patanjali jaimin but he says that he refutes all these philosophies so anybody who reads propad's books propad said if anyone reads all my books then that's like a phd in th- in theology because they learn all the whatever needs to be known about philosophy theology religion what to speak about knowing about krishna himself but they also understand what is the proper position of bhagavatam of the jiva us what is our position what is bhagwan's position and how and we are meant to serve god and how to awaken that love of god i don't have that desire to serve god i don't have desire to chant to do all this so what can i do so what to do shastra says awaken love how to awaken love sadhana bhakti chant hari krishna take prasad be in association of devotees gradually bhakti rutpadyate pumsam shoka moha bhaya apah bhakti is awakened in the heart and fear illusion lamentation disappear bhakti rutpadyate bhakti is awakened so through that uh, study of shrimad bhagavatam one can get that so here it says that one should be conversant yes by shila prabhupad's books will become conversant here the here the knowledge and lectures of prabhupad he refutes all these because today modern scientists they are saying there is nothing like soul we are simply uh, matter so that is one of these six that we are matter we are all atoms and what happens after death atoms will go into the ground but that you cannot really explain that you know that was even a small even a someone in iskon for 2 3 weeks he can defeat that <laughs> after reading propad's books you know i was told that the newly uh, joined bhakta newly shaved bhakta new distributing books is on a higher philosophical level than a, a sanyasi in the impersonalistic school is at a higher level he can defeat and he can establish higher truth simply if you are saying that everyone is uh, at uh, matter there is no soul then the question is where is the consciousness coming from we are saying consciousness comes from soul we are all conscious beings all right so if we are not the soul there is no soul then we are the body so you have to explain where consciousness is coming from where is it coming from why is in this conscious this is conscious that is not conscious i can pinch it nothing is happening but if i pinch him he can <laughs> he'll jump conscious is consciousness in matter which matter they'll say you have to identify where is it it's in the heart okay i'll give you a heart <clears throat> a dead person i'll give you the heart <clears throat> make it conscious make it conscious can you do it no why not 
You said it's conscious. So what is conscious? Some say blood is conscious. The blood is going, when the blood doesn't go, it goes. So I'll give you the blood here. Make life, make it. You cannot make it. So that theory is refuted. It's one of these. Prabhupada refuted it within Shastra, within his books. Okay, that is one of the theories. So many other there, that simply by doing our work, everything is done. Just do your work, do your duty, that is it. Karma Naivadit Karaste. That is Karma Mimamsa. Karma Mimamsa says that if you simply do your work in Varnashram, everything is done, that is it. Okay, so in Srimad uh, Bhagavad Gita, it says to do your work. It says that. Do your work. But what happens when you do your work? Where do you go? By doing our work, we go to Sarga. We go to Swarga. We are not going to Goloka. Swarga is different from Goloka. Heavenly planets. That is different. So by just doing our work in Varnashram, we are able to attain perfection. Uh, we are able to attain uh, a good destination, material destination, not a spiritual destination. So as we said that even in Bhagavad Gita, this is all refuted. Therefore, the person who is in proper knowledge can establish Bhagavad Dharma and say, this is not correct, this is correct, this is correct. We have to come to that stage. Actually, not only the lecturer, but everyone has to come to that stage. Otherwise, what will happen? What will happen is that we are presented with the teachings of Bhagavad Dharma. But somewhere in our mind, in one corner of the intelligence, in the corner of the mind, one thought is there. Maybe, maybe this is the way to enjoy. I'll do this, but maybe this is not the path. Or maybe there is something better. It may not come now. It may come after a long time. And so we have to refute in our mind also, intelligently, intellectually, understand the philosophy, remove all the doubts. And that's what happened when Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita. Krishna could have told Arjun, Arjun, you believe in me, or you'll burn in hell forever. You surrender or you'll burn in hell. No, because that's not the way to fully surrender to God. You cannot surrender like that. You can be scared into surrendering to, for some extent. But you cannot do, dedicate whole being and surrender unless you are convinced. And to be convinced means to understand that philosophy and why this is correct, that is not correct. That understanding has to come. How will it come? philosophical understanding and therefore as we said Madhya Madhikari the there are three levels of devotees beginner intermediate advanced difference between Kanista and Madhyama the beginner and but an intermediate is that the Madhya Madhikari the intermediate one he knows Shastra through Shastra he can substantiate his position and so when he's presented with some big challenge of Maya in this material world he is able to stand the ground just like a ship which is anchor anchored you know what anchor is anchor what is anchor in hindi no anchor when the ship drops something heavy yes so now when a heavy wave comes and hits it's still there they drop the anchor it's normally very heavy very big and uh, so in that way one who is versed in shastra becomes very firm in bhakti and is able to conquer all the doubts and be fixed and uh, any doubts that are there which is Arjun had doubts so Krishna could not tell him you surrender what is your doubt surrender to me he explained clearly in Bhagavad Gita and Arjun asked many questions this is how to come to the level he asked questions and then the result was Nashtamoho Arjun said Nashtamoho Smriti Lavva my illusion has gone the illusion has to go and therefore all these other six atheistic paths, it's inside us, it is in us. And the Mayavadic thoughts, impersonalistic thoughts, is there in the Buddha Jeev. And therefore, it had to be, it has to be weeded out properly. And so, Prabhupada could just write in all his books about Krishna is like this, Krishna is like that, Krishna Leela, Krishna's form. But what will we think is Krishna? We'll think, first of all, maybe. Krishna is object of our enjoyment. 
let me hear and enjoy the leela, oh, no, but not that idea that I have to serve God. Or let me hear the leela of Krishna and Radha, who uh, one ordinary boy and girl who appeared in this world. No, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, it said that um, Ekat Manav Api Bhuvipura Deha Bhedam Gatautau. He was one, but he divided in two, Radha and Krishna, for his transcendental Leela. So if we don't understand the philosophy, then simply hearing the Leela will not be able to come to spiritual perfection. The philosophical understanding has to be there like this in detail. Sutta Goswami was in that position. So he was given the charge that you speak to us because they wanted to come to a point of surrender and to perfection. So they wanted to remove all their doubts. So they were placing themselves before Sutta Goswami. You were there, Bhagavatam was spoken. So you can tell us. Now in the last part of the purport here it says that Sutta Goswami was the proper teacher. So he was given the elevated seat, the Vyasasana. Vyasa Dev is designated here as personality of Godhead because he is the authorized, empowered incarnation. So Vyasa is the incarnation of uh, Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, not direct incarnation like Ram, Narasimha, but he is known as Shakti Avesha Avatar. He is a Jiva like us who has been given more power to act. So his power is that he wrote the Vedas. The super intellect, it's written in Shastra, Vishala Buddhi, great intelligence and intellect. He wrote Upanishads. We cannot understand one line of these Upanishads, <laughs> the Rig Veda. So he wrote all of this now. Well, okay, Ganesh wrote it, but he spoke it. That was only Mahabharata he wrote. So, Vyasadeva was designated as Bhagavan because he was the incarnation. It says here, Badarayana. Vyasadeva's son was Shukadeva Goswami. Vyasa spoke to Shuka. Shuka again spoke. Sutta Goswami heard. And now Sutta Goswami will speak beginning of chapter 2. Hare Krishna. Any questions? Like, uh, we have to come to the level of understanding intellectually. Like, yeah. Uh, so that uh, we are convinced about it. Yes. But the other thing is like uh, we have, uh, we cannot really understand everything. Yeah. So, here's to draw the line. Like, okay, this much I need to understand, or uh, like, or, 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 or I should try to understand more and more. Because uh, this yearning tendency would be there in science. So, much, I mean, the boundary. A boundary. Yeah, first of all, one clear thing to understand. What is the difference between a jnani and a bhakta? The difference is a jnani, he studies Shastra to know God. The bhakta studies Shastra for awakening bhakti. That should be clear in our mind. I want to awaken my love of God. But the jnani, he studies, he'll study a lot. They call jnanis. They'll study a lot of knowledge of Shastra. They'll read Vedanta, they'll read Upanishad, Upanishad mostly. Because they want to get knowledge of God, principally that's it. They'll find God, they're thinking, I'll find God with my brain, my intellect, my intelligence. You cannot. It has to be given to you. The Supreme Personality will give His mercy. Brahma says that. Athapi deva padam buja dvaya prashad leshanugrit evahi janati tatvam bhagwan mahimno Nachanyapi Chiram Vichinvan. He says that the Supreme Athapi Deva Padam Bujadvaya, that O oh, Supreme Personality, to come to your lotus feet, Padam Bujadvaya, Prashadale Shanugit Eva, by your mercy will come. Nachanyapi Chiram Vichinvan, not, and not by after long, long study. So, what is the boundary? The boundary first is to understand. What is the goal? The goal of my study is I, am, I want to awaken love of God. Okay, that is to understand the goal. Okay, and regarding study is we study within the parameters of our parampara and acharyas, what they tell us. For example, Srila Prabhupada has given us these books. Study, read the books and we are reading. 
And within the words of the Acharyas, he's reminding, surrender. Srila Prabhupada, every line, every purport, surrender, rascal, surrender, fool, surrender. <laughs> you cannot enjoy, you cannot enjoy. Krishna is supreme, Krishna is supreme. This is repeating. So Acharya, the, that he keeps us in line to tell us, finally, what are we reading? Is that he'll repeat, and I read this, again he writes next purport, again next purport he's writing. But the devotee hearing that becomes enlivened. He becomes happy to read. Krishna is supreme. Yes, yes. Surrender. Fool. Yeah, I'm a fool. I'm not surrendering. <laughs> Some get angry. But uh, how to know the boundary? The boundary is you follow the Acharya. What he says. Acharya says, read Srimad Bhagavatam. We read Srimad Bhagavatam. Acharya says, wash the pots now. We wash the pots. <laughs> Acharya says, now preach. Go out. Spread the knowledge. And we do that. We follow the Acharya. Acharya and an Adiksha Guru is representing Srila Prabhupada. So he will give us the order and we follow. We are subservient to Bhakti and we read to evoke Bhakti. We understand I am reading but finally God has to reveal Himself. So in order to reveal Himself, I have to do Bhakti and I have to be subservient to Guru. Yasya Deva Para Bhakti Jatha Deva Tathav Guru Tasya Hi Kadita Artha Prakarshanda Mahatmana Only one who is subservient and surrendered to the Guru and Bhagavan is the purpose of knowledge revealed. So, yeah, in conclusion, we read the knowledge under order of the Guru, not on our own. And if we want to read something else, we'll ask Sri Guru, can I read this? Can I read that? We ask that question. He'll tell yes or no. And what Guru says, we take it as Krishna. So, that is one. And when we read, we remind ourselves we are reading to evoke bhakti. But even Gita says, Vistare Natmano Yogam Vibhutim Chachanaradana, that um, Arjuna asks Krishna, tell me your glories. And uh, Krishna says, yes, I'll tell you that Etam um, Vibhutim Yogam Cha Mama Yoveti Tattvataha So Vikalpena Yogena Yujyate Natra Sangshaya. One who hears about my glories and knowledge, mysticism, he gets bhakti unto me. So we should read, but we should not read on our own whim and our own uh, desire. According to Sri Guru, he tells, read that, okay, read this, but also preach, also serve. So in that way, we can remain in the boundary. Yes. Any question? Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Yeah.